to lift you up, to honor you, to give you glory. And in that, we will be encouraged and strengthened. So Holy Spirit, come and have your way. been walking the same old road for miles and miles if you've been hearing the same old voice to the same old life if you try to fill the same old holes inside well there's a better life there's a better life if you've got pain If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's the pain. thank you that this morning you're sweeping through this room with your freedom we're thanking you this morning that you're stirring that desire up within us that we are no longer satisfied being in chains that we are no longer satisfied being bound up God that you are stirring up this desire for more freedom to walk with you in power that when the world looks at us that they see a difference that they see power they see miracles signs and wonders and that they give you glory and honor so, Father, this morning, we just declare that you are our champion. We can do nothing apart from you. So we rest in you this morning. I've tried so hard to see it. so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory heaven could not earn it you give what we 
don't deserve it. You take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants for when you stand undefeated. Every battle. Shout. He's powerful. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me.
bless you, Jesus. This morning, we just declare that you are worthy. We thank you that every single thing that we encounter, you go before us. bless you that you are our champion and no matter what I've done you've taken all of that and you have turned it around for your glory and for good if that's not a champion I don't know what is you're able to take every mess every heartbreak and work it out for our good so that we can stand in this place undefeated, giving you honor and glory. What splendor, what beauty. Oh, my King, you are so deserving. Deserving of my heart, my worship, my adoration. And every breath, and even that doesn't seem enough. So we bring what we have this morning, God. Hearts full of worship and, and gratitude. And even our brokenness, some hearts in this room that are struggling, we bring that to you. Everything that we have and everything that we are, we lay it before you. Because when we lift you up and when we magnify you, all of those things become strangely dim. So we magnify your name and magnify your, your beauty and your splendor, the awe and the wonder of who you are. The splendor of the King clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, but it trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice, and how great. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, and days to which He stands, yes, He does. Lion and the lamb, so 
of our King, the greatness of, of who you are. And when we see you when, we, when you come just bursting through those clouds, riding on a white horse, <laughs> the awe, the wonder. <laughs> Jesus come quickly. Jesus, come quickly and make us ready. Make us ready, Jesus. You know, this week I sat on the front porch of a little cabin in the middle of Colorado, face to face with an atheist. And we sat and we talked of Jesus. We talked of the beauty and the wonder and the splendor of what he's done in my life. And he argued at every single point every single factual point about the Bible, but you know what he couldn't argue with? My testimony. He couldn't take that. He couldn't argue with that because it's mine and it belongs to me. And as I began to continue to pour that out to him and share it with him, I just kept hearing, you will overcome. You will overcome this doubting spirit by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You continue, church, to stand in your testimony. You continue to share with this lost and dying world the testimony and the power of Jesus Christ in your life. Never stop, never stop sharing. There's power in that. If you've stopped and you haven't told somebody in the last few weeks, I'm gonna challenge you this week. You share it. You share it with somebody. When God opens that door, I pray the Holy Spirit quickens your heart and your mind. And you know at that moment, it's time to share and it's time to speak. It carries authority, it carries power. So we sing how great is our God. Come and sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing at your grace.
You are so great, Jesus. You are so great. Thank you that this morning you have come to meet with us. Thank you for the gift that when we praise you, it encourages our spirit. <laughs> what a trade. What a trade. We bless you in this place and we honor you. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. I'm so glad that everyone's here. Uh, I know we've got so many people that's out on vacation and out running the roads. And, you know, I pulled up this morning and Teddy had a boat hooked up to his truck. I thought, I know where that's going. <laughs> and it's, it's just a wonderful time for us to get to enjoy uh, some of the things because I know we're getting, into, we're getting into the holiday season and we're going to be getting down to business with a lot of things. But this morning, we just want to take a few moments and worship together. I feel like God has really given me a word. We've started this, this time, this, this entire August of awakening. And this, this awakening, the messages that God's given me, I really feel has been relevant. And specifically the one today, I think is going to be re really relevant for everyone. So I just ask you to prepare your heart for a few moments with that. But before we go into it, I, I, want, to, I want to spend a little more time in worship. I just feel like we just need to do it today. You know, I, there's probably not even one of you that hasn't just faced a whirlwind this week. I'm just telling you, everybody that I talked to said, you know what, it seems like we've been going through this and we've been facing that and facing something else. And I'm just telling you, that's not uncommon. What's happening right now is there, we are at the closing moments of this dispensation. Don't think for one second that Satan isn't doing everything possible. There's a convulsing spiritually that is taking place. And we're facing things that are, are uh, challenging, difficult. It's a warfare. It's something you're thinking, where did this come from? That attack, because the Bible said, uh, Mark chapter 4, it said when Satan comes uh, to steal the word, because said when the word is sown in the heart, Satan comes and he uses affliction, Affliction, now, now, for the sake of the word, affliction will come to you to stop the word in your heart, according to G what Jesus said. Or affliction or persecution. Now, how does that happen? That happens when all of a sudden some, somebody just gets riled up for no reason toward you. And it becomes a persecution. And it's not, don't take it personal, it's spiritual. Jesus said, it was Satan comes immediately with affliction, persecution, cares of this life. That word care means pressure of the mind weighed down by responsibility or disquieted by apprehension. Now, there's a whole boatload of that going on with everybody. That's an attack of the enemy that has come. And if we don't recognize that we're dealing with spiritual things as much as we're dealing with natural things. Now, I'm not saying things don't happen in the natural, but if you can, I, I, if I could give you this illustration one more time, the, the idea of the bullfighter. Now, the bullfighter, he, that matador, he weighs like 90 pounds soaking wet, but he's all decked out, he's got the hat on, he's got, and he's got this cape. Now, the bull, on the other hand, is about 4,000 pounds of mean, mad meat with big horn the, the he is no match for that bull but the problem is is that the that the bull is deceived he thinks that rag is his problem he thinks that cape is his problem so he charges what the cape the matador he just steps out of the way and moves the cape spears the bull as he passes by. That's what's happened a lot of times. We've not realized what we're dealing with. We're not, we're not dealing with, guys, listen to me. We're not playing in the play yard anymore. We're dealing with the big boys. We're dealing with serious spiritual stuff, and we're going to have to be awakened, and we're going to have to be clear-headed about what's going on, lest we be toppled by a spiritual enemy that is at work very strongly in this earth today. And that strong spiritual thing is happening politically. It's happening socially. We're seeing a real attack against our educational system. We're seeing an attack against our church. A lot of believers are just going through things. But listen, come on, buckle up, baby. You can make it through this thing. You are equipped 
to get through this. I know sometimes it seems overwhelming, but you're not alone. We're standing with you, and we're going to prop you up, and if we have to, we're going to drag you over the line. We're going to take you forward, and you're going to see some good things happen. So if you've been going through some things, don't you dare lose heart. Come on, we've been through things. Paul made the statement, he said, you know, we've been persecuted and we've suffered and we've been through all these things. But he said, in Christ, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So a lot of things are going on right now. And I urge you, this is my position as a pastor, where I get to give an overview of what's happening. I know what's going on. And I'm just telling you, this is what we're dealing with. And so what we have to do is we deal with that through worship. We deal with that through the word. We deal with that through speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in our heart to the Lord. We get together and all of a sudden you may be down, but after I talk to you, you feel a little better. Or I may just be feeling down, and by the time you finish with me, I think, okay, all right, I feel, I feel better, I feel better. So that's what we do because we're in a warfare. And during this time of warfare, we're going to see great signs and wonders happen. We're going to see things take place. The prophetic grace is going to rise up in this house like never before. We're going to see the power of the Holy Spirit rise in this place. And I want you to position yourself. We're not here to play a little baby game. We're here to play a serious game of life. And I want you to know that we, well, if I could just coin the old thing that everybody's always said, I read the end of the book and we win. Okay? I'm in the book of Revelation, and I'm just telling you something. I used to dread that book of Revelation, you know, because it was just so mystical and whatever. But after I got into reading that thing, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Jesus is in every part of this book. This thing is about Jesus and his lordship, and he's taking back the title deed to this earth, and it's going to convulse this earth. But I'm just telling you, he is the Lord, and Jesus is the Lord of your life. And I promise you, we're going to get through this thing, and we're going to be fine. Can you just turn to somebody and say, we're really going to be okay? Come on, we're going to be okay. We are. It's going to be good. <laughs> it is. It's going to be good. Well, we're going to worship just a little bit. I want to begin our worship this morning with our tithing, our offering, our giving to the Lord. This is our worship to the Lord. It's not a debt you owe. If you think it's a debt, just hang on to it because you'll need it. But this is a worship unto the Lord. This is a worship unto the Lord. I, I bring the first fruit of my increase and I say, Lord, I am what I am because of you. I have what I have because of you, and I worship you. And I, I bring this as an acknowledgement of your grace and your power. So I want you this morning, I just want you to prepare your hearts as we give. What a privilege it is for to engage God through our giving. Isn't that amazing? Just a wonderful thing. Of course, we have electronic giving in the back. Those of you, we have a phone app that you can give by that. But I'm going to ask all the guys, girls, if you all would come. And we're just going to stand up here, and I just want you to prepare your tithing, your offering. Father, I want to say thank you for blessing this place. You blessed us. You blessed our house. You blessed our family. You blessed, you blessed our resources. When the enemy came in, you raised up a standard like a flood against him, and he couldn't resist that. Father, I want to thank you that you are the Lord. There's none beside you. There's no equal to you. There's not even close. You are Lord alone. <laughs> you are Lord alone. <laughs> and all the things that we face, Lord, are just silly little things under our feet in light of your Lordship. And we thank you for it. I love you, Lord. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful for you. <laughs> I'm so grateful for you. Okay, the Lord just gives this to me. A righteous man falls seven times and gets up again. <laughs> I, I know, maybe you say, I've been through so many things. I know, get up, come on, get up, get up. This is the time, we're gonna get up. Thank you, Lord, for your <laughs> faithfulness. <laughs> oh, phew. Your faithfulness, you've been so faithful, you've been so good. I love you, Lord, with all my heart. And Lord, I just yield my heart to you today, and I just ask God that your presence, <laughs> let your presence 
who rest upon this house, I pray. We yield ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I want you to come. You can be dismissed to the back. The rest of you come. Come on. Let's honor the Lord with our giving this morning, would you? Thank you, Lord. I hate to stop that. I really do. You guys just aren't having enough fun. That's what your problem is. <laughs> Father, we are grateful today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind to us. In the midst of life, we stand up and we say, Jesus is the Lord of our life, and your kindness is beyond even our ability to really declare it. Father, thank you. And today as we, as we give, I'm just asking, Father, that you would take this which we've given and multiply it. Almost like you would take the, and multiply to the, took the few loaves and the few fish and you multiplied it and fed to the thousands. Somehow you have the ability, Lord, to take the little we have and make it enough. And Lord, I'm just asking that you would do this today. Would you just multiply this and as we feed the multitudes, I'm just asking God that you would bless it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Would you all stand with me for just a few moments? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, the rest of you can stand. It won't hurt. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's so good. God is so good. Oh, Daddy, could you just bring down the lights just a little bit and just, I just want everybody just to just close your eyes and just, my goodness. There's nothing so precious and so wonderful as his presence. <laughs> you can have it all. I don't need any of that. I just need his presence. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. Mm. Oh. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and holy, holy is He. You just slip your hands up to the Lord and just worship Him. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is 
to come With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings And you are my everything And I will adore you Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Jesus, your name is power for the living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Oh, and oh. We come into your throne room. We lavish our praise on you. 
We lavish you with our love, with our worship. that. Do you feel that? Do you sense that? It's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. <laughs> Some of you need prayer, maybe hands laid on you. We won't take but a moment with that, but if that's you, I want you to come. We want to lay hands on you. We just want to believe for you. We'll pray for you. There's something powerful happening right up here right now. Spiritual things are being done. Spiritual warfare being carried out. You need that. I want you to come stand as we sing. Go ahead.
thankful for your presence. We're thankful that we could be standing in this tangible room with all of these things that we can see with our earthly eyes, but your presence makes it heavenly. Your presence is what moves us down into our spirit, man, beyond the things of the flesh. It's amazing, God, how your presence can shift an entire room it changes the atmosphere and here we are getting to soak in it here we are getting to worship you in it and so our eyes are fixed on you this morning. so turn your eyes upon Jesus Look for in his wonderful face 
and the things of earth will grow strange they did in the light of his glory and grace oh so darkness you see there's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free so in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dead in the light of his glory you Jesus for your presence for your gaze that captures us and so this morning God we fix our eyes on you yes. we look full into your wonderful face God and every single thing that's trying to burden us God right now it's minuscule minuscule because of your goodness and your glory and your beauty and your splendor and your wonder so our eyes are fixed on you Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith sing that one more time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
Let's sing the church. Oh, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Isn't the Lord good? Oh. You can go ahead and be seated. Man lays a lot of plans, but God God will instruct the heart. Oh. I feel so totally different than I did when I walked in this morning. Isn't it amazing how sometimes what we really need it's just a few moments in the presence of the Lord. That is what we need more than anything else is a few moments in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> you just have to excuse me for a moment here while I'm trying to collect myself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. <clears throat> 
Oh, bless the Lord. <clears throat> bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got a quote by C.S. Lewis you got to share with me. If I can see it. The freedom of God. The freedom of God consists in the fact that no cause other than himself produces his acts. And no external obstacles can impede them. His goodness is the root in which all grow, and his omnipotence the air in which they all flower. That just sounds like a C.S. Lewis quote, doesn't it? It's amazing to me how a man who was atheist found God in such a deep and meaningful way as Lewis found. <laughs> it was incredible. Satan is still trying to figure how that happened. <laughs> but to know him is everything, to know him. A lot of people know about him, but they don't know him. Gracious, there's a lot of people in the church that I'm not even sure they're saved. They say they're believers, but really... Do they know him? And that's where it's found, is in him. You know, I used to think if you got saved, then you made Jesus the Lord of your life. I think that's backwards. I think, I think you make Jesus the Lord of your life, and he saves you. <laughs> we don't like that, do we? And that's because we want to get saved, but we don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's the truth. I just don't want to go to hell. That's, that's, that's my thing. God's calling us to discipleship. He's calling us to more than just, he's calling us to more than just um, a church attendance. And he's calling us to more than just being part of a group or tagging ourselves with a name. He's calling us to discipleship. <sighs> you know, I'm, the last couple of weeks have been very important. We've taken August, and we've called it the August of Awakening, which I think is very important for us. We set this, because this is a time when people are so scattered right now. July, August, people are all over the place. And we've really set our hearts to awaken this month. I felt like if we preached this, signs follow the word. When you begin to preach something, signs will begin to follow. And we've needed an awakening because there's been a slumber that the world has been in. It's been very sluggish. The church has been in. It's, it's like a, I, I mentioned to you a hundred times about what I saw a decade or so ago of this door being opened in the earth and something very wicked has come out of it. Well, as I've been doing study on this Facebook Live, I've been doing this study on the book of Revelation, and I'm beginning to see the relevance of the spiritual things that are taking place around us where the earth literally is opening up and things are coming out into our communities that we've never seen in our lifetime, wickedness that is beyond our comprehension, ancient idolatry wickedness being released. There's just, there's just nastiness all over the place. And, and we, as believers, stand as light in the middle of darkness, and that's what we do. And so I've been talking to you guys about awakening, and it's been so important that you let this happen. We started it by talking about the 
awakening to who we are, who Christ made us. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Then I talked about eternity, awakening to eternity. Do you know that what you do here is going to make the difference in what you do there? What you do here is laying up for what you're doing there, not your salvation, but your works, the things that you do. You're going to stand before God, and the Bible said you're going to give account for everything. He's going to open up the books, which are going to be all the things that have to do with your activities, and you're going to be judged and rewarded according to what you did. That's why it's important what you do here. I think a lot of people are going to arrive in heaven broke and they don't realize the importance of the fact that everything that we do, even Jesus said, if you give a cup of water to someone in my name, you won't lose your reward. Well, what do you mean reward? The reward that's going to be laid out for you among the other thousands of things that you've done in behalf of the poor, in behalf of those in need, in behalf of service, in behalf of your church, in behalf of your community. And then last week, I talked about the end times, awakening to the end times. Guys, let me tell you, tell you something right now. I cannot be more serious to you. We are at the end. We're at the end. We don't have centuries to go. I don't know that we have moments to go. Everything that is needed to be fulfilled for Jesus to come has been fulfilled. The world has been positioned. Everything from the monetary system, everything to a one world government opportunity, everything that the Bible would speak about concerning the end time is literally locked in place and ready. Jesus is about to come. We are at that point. What a privilege it is that we have to be here. And we're not here by accident. We're here by divine appointment. God's got a plan for your life in this end time. How important that that is. Amen. And really, the thing that is concluding the August of awakening is awakening to your stewardship your gifts, your callings, all of those things that are there. It involves your gifts. You have Some of you have gifts that you've basically left untapped. Some of you have gifts that you're using in all the wrong ways. You have treasure, and your treasure isn't just money. Please, get, get your mind off that. Money is just simply leverage. The treasure that's inside you is so much. It's so rich. Your ability to impact, your ability to influence, your ability to encourage, your ability to step into a very dark, dark place and bring light to those poor people. There's so much in you that's untapped. We live such a life of selfishness, such a life of ease, everything, even to the point that we will even look at the Scripture and think that the only reason God gave us Scripture was to make us more comfortable. We don't understand the value of the Word of God as being commissioning us into the kingdom of God and into the, into the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the tools that He's given us and the things that He's called us to do. Now, now the reason why I have felt so strong about this is because I, I feel, I, I, I was thinking about this yesterday. I feel such a sense of urgency right now. You can believe me now or you can believe me later, but I'm just telling you something. I, as a pastor, God positions me that I give oversight in certain areas that he shows me things that has to do with where we're going. He's the great shepherd. I'm, I'm his under-shepherd. I watch over the flock. So what God's doing in me is he's giving me insight into things that are happening in your lives individually but corporately. I can see things that are happening. I can see spiritual things that are happening. That's why it's so important that you stay hooked up with me. You need to stay hooked up with me. You need a pastor. You need a shepherd. I, I, I hate to break this to you, but the reason why God 
linked Christians to being sheep is because sheep are the dumbest animal in the planet. You can lead a sheep from this side to this side and he's lost. Sheep can't defend themselves. They can't, they can't take care of the wildlife that gets on them. They can't even really bite very well. They can't do anything. They, can't, they don't have claws. They don't have, they don't, they don't. And God likened us to that. We need, we are dependent upon the shepherd. We are dependent upon him. You're not ever designed to be self-fulfilling. God designed you to do that. But I feel the sense of urgency. You need to please hear my heart. Something is happening right now that we cannot afford to miss. We're at the end of time. We're at the most, in my opinion, we're at the most pivotal time in history. And our connection with him and with one another right now is crucial. And this is something the Lord gave me. And I want you to please hear me. This is a warning, and, and there's things I probably need to do this at, even at another time, but I want to give you just a couple of things God gave me, that if we fail to come together at this time, if we fail to come together and, and be connected during this time, we're going to miss what God has planned for us, not only as a church, but individually. I believe that. And if that happens, I'm telling you, I feel like we as a church have failed. All that Jesus went through prepared him for a moment. All of the preparation, all of the growing, all of the things that he did prepared him for a moment in time. It was critical. And we've got to understand that we are at a moment in time that is critical for our lives, for our churches, for, for individually. God is doing something in this earth, and God is calling us to do this. And, and this is the time to apply our hearts, to apply our prayers, and to apply our actions. Now, I know some people, they might even say, well, God doesn't really need me. You know, he's just going to do what he wants to do anyway. And that's simply not the case here. This time it's time sensitive. It isn't the fact that God's got to go find somebody else to come and do something. Because let me just tell you something. Nobody can do what you do like you do because you are individual. You are that individual in who you are. But this time, that can't happen. This time, it's time sensitive. And if we fail, there's a loss in the harvest and there's a break in the kingdom. And this is the time that God trusted us to position us for this time. And we can do it or we cannot do it. That's the craziest thing. We can try to be disobedient. It's almost like Jonah. He's going someplace else. And somebody says, well, if I don't go, God's going to send someone else. I truly believe that's not true. I believe that there are people that will perish because no one was there. I think it's that time sensitive. I believe Jesus is about to come and things that we think, well, in the next few years, somebody, I can't tell you that there's more years. I can't tell you. There may be. I don't know. I'm never going to get into the wagon of saying Jesus is coming on this day. I just know we're there. I know we're close. I know something wonderful is about to happen. And this is a time where we've got to keep our lamps filled with the oil because the bridegroom comes. And those who have their lamps filled with oil are going in. Amen. Amen. So I, and I know that's a heavy word. I know that's a heavy burden. But I think we, we're talking to adults here. Almost every one of you have been in church your entire lifetime. You don't need to be fed with baby food. You are a child of God who's walked in the authority of his word. This is a time for us to sit down as serious adults, spiritual adults, and look at the responsibilities of what God's put around us 
at this particular point in history. We've got to awaken to the fact that we're not just called to build a good, safe life for ourselves. God wants you to be comfortable. God wants you to have all the things that you need, but that's not the reason for you. And that's not the reason for his spirit, and that's not the reason for his word. You are a sojourner. You don't belong here. You're going someplace. You're part of a kingdom, another kingdom. You're a citizen of heaven. But we've built our life on this earth as though this was just simply all we've had, and we've got to awaken ourselves to the fact that we're not just trying to do that. Listen, a ship is safe as long as it stays in the harbor, but that ship has forever missed its purpose. That ship is designed to sail the world. That ship is designed to go through storms. That ship is designed to carry loads. That ship is designed to have destination, purpose, intention. And, and we can park it, we can park it, we can park it in the harbor, but the fact is, is it'll never fulfill its intention. God called you to more than just sitting in the harbor and being safe. Well, I'm just going to retire and go to the lake. No, no. You, 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 you don't have that luxury. Now, I'm not saying you've got to work on the same job all your days of your life, but I'm just telling you something. You are in the army of God. You've been called and commissioned to a spiritual warfare and a spiritual life that you're not going to be discharged from. This, this, is, this is on you. And it's something that we must awaken ourselves to. I, I know everyone has felt so overwhelmed. I have too. There's been times I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? You know, it's almost like I, I've been, I remember one time I was, I was in Denver in the middle of the night in the middle of a snowstorm, and it, I couldn't see anything past the hood of my car. I tried to stay behind a big semi as trying to follow him, but Lord, I don't know, was, that may have been the blind leading the blind. Finally, I just got to where I couldn't do anything else. And there's times when we're facing storms that you can't see much beyond just right there. And we've a lot of people's been going through that. Several people that I've talked to today, this last week, that says, you know what? It just seems like I've been going through a whirlwind, a storm in my life. Everything just going crazy and going wrong around me. That's because we are dealing with things spiritually that are out of the ordinary. And I feel like the enemy has come in to try to do that, but we've been in the process of standing and speaking and rebuking and declaring the word and praying for one another. And, and I really feel we're walking into a clearing like we've not had before. I believe God is going to bring us into such a spiritual clearing that we walk in the midst of a crazy world around us where we're walking in the authority of the name of Jesus. We're very clearly saying this is this and that is that. Operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Things with COVID, with the, the heat. Is anybody praying about this heat at all? Dear God in heaven, Help us. But we're going to have to make the decision to go. I got this quote this morning. It said, it's not the chosen few, but it's the few who have chose. You're going to have to make the decision what you do. You're going to have to do it. What you're doing with your time, your talent, your energy, your special talents, your abilities, your skills. Yeah, I was thinking about this yesterday. I thought, <laughs> when you join the military, they don't just tell you to go buy a plane. They don't. They don't tell you to go buy a gun and come back. What they do is they train you and they equip you. And I was looking up, dear Lord, I thought, what, what, what about some of the equipment that they give you? The M16, slate fire, thousands and thousands of dollars. They provide that for you. You didn't have to, you didn't have to earn it. All you did was be trained, and they hand that to you. M27 infantry, automatic rifle, uh, the, the planes, the F-35 Lightning, the F-15 Eagle. F-15 Eagle, $117 million. Unbelievable. 
and they train you and they equip you and everything they give you is for engagement. Now, what would it be like if they gave you a plane and you just took it to the Bahamas for the vacation spots? They said, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a, there's a war going on now. I can't make it this week. Tell you what, I'm going to try to get there next week. I'll fly in. <laughs> what about the war? Well, I'm really busy. You, you understand, I got, <laughs> I've got a lot of things going. I'll try to get on that next week if I possibly can. You know, they took the rifle, that wonderful, beautiful rifle that they handed you, and they just went hunting with it and then hung it up in the back of their pickup. Now, what would that be like? Seriously, what would that be like? But yet, do you know how many of God's people that have been equipped tooth and nail, man? I mean, we've been equipped with, with, with supersonic stuff. And we just take it fishing. We say, well, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get back this next week to try to see if I can make something. God gave you equipment for warfare. God gave you equipment for you to use and engage, engaging in spiritual warfare of the enemy, but engaging in one another. There are things, the tools you have, the gifts you have that I desperately need. I need the encouragement you can give. I, I need the song you can give, the scripture you can give, the hope that you can give. I just need something from you. You have something, but yet what we're doing is we're so caught up in our own self that all we see is the fact that, well, am I comfortable not realizing that I'm engaged in an army. I've been drafted, baby. This is something that I can't get discharged from, and for the rest of my life, I will I will answer for what I've done. Somebody say amen. So, <laughs> do you think that all of the investment that God's given us and all the tools that he's given us is just for discretional use? And the answer would be no. I've got this for you. There's no such thing as a volunteer in the kingdom of God as either faithful or unfaithful stewards. No such thing as a volunteer. God doesn't have volunteers. You're a steward. You're either faithful with it or you're unfaithful with it. So I want to just, as I guess as an encouragement today to you, to tell you that the Holy Spirit has brought us to this place for the purpose of equipping us, strengthening us, blessing us, and using us with one another, with the talents that we have. I know that we've been through COVID. There's a tendency to, to uh, disconnect. Some of the companies uh, have closed down their brick and mortar, and they just basically said operate from home, which in so many cases that just makes sense because they spend so much money in that other stuff. But the, there's a problem when in, in the church when we have that mentality and we don't understand the value of connecting to one another. We have been called to connect to one another. The church is designed for connection. It's, the, it's made for more than corporate worship or even experiencing the presence of God. You know, this morning as we come, I don't know where I, you could ever find more beautiful worship than we have and connecting with the Spirit of God. I'm just telling you something. I don't know about you, but I've connected with the Spirit of God today. But do you know something that God has called us for more than that? He's called us for more than that. Its design is also seen in the model of a body, and that's where our connection is. And you are called to one another. This is something we have to awaken to right now. As we have this awakening to our tools, to our gifts, all of that awakening declares to us is that we are we have, rather, a responsibility for one another. What are you doing with your responsibilities? What are you doing? And, and again, I know, I know sometimes that can seem harsh, but I'm just telling you something. As a pastor, I'm, 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 you, God is going to pull you by yourself before him, and he's going to say, 
give account for what you've done. Give account for what you've done. What have you done? We've got to awaken to that responsibility. There are things that are happening right now that I'm asking God for. I'm just asking the Lord. I'm saying, Lord, I'm just asking that you would please, please equip us that we can begin to move forward like we've never done before. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to. I'm ready to. I don't want to sit and lag back. I don't want to think about things that you, I'm ready to move forward with the kingdom of God. I, I want to just give you a little, little prophetic word here. Can I do that? This is 2 Kings 3, 16 through 19. God said to them, dig ditches all over the valley. Dig ditches all over the valley. And here's what will happen. You won't hear the wind. You won't see the rain. But this valley is going to be filled, up, filled with water. For a while now, it seems like we've been in a drought. It seems like we've been limping by, barely breathing, hardly thriving. But the but the word of the Lord is begin to dig the ditches in the midst of the valley, in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of dead places, start digging. Even when you don't hear the wind, even when you can't see the signs of rain, dig. The water is coming. It's, it's going to flood every dry place, every wilderness place, every dead place, and every valley in your life. We're stepping into the overflow. No longer will we be scrapping the bottom. No longer will we be living off the scraps. No longer will we be just surviving. I feel a shifting in the supernatural that will take us into a place of overflow and out of the place of operating in what is left. It won't be a drop. It won't just be a puddle. I see ditches being dug in hard places and God sending refreshing waters that will saturate the land living water so dig so dig keep digging prepare now for what's coming dig in the dead places and watch the waters come so this is where we are right now and so I don't know what's going on in your life all of you but I'm telling you something you're equipped to do something about it you are equipped to do something about it. And, and I'm asking every one of you today to join with us. Join your hearts. I'm asking you to join your faith. I'm asking you to take the gifts that you have, dedicate them again to the Lord. Lord, here I am. Send me. The Lord's saying, who will go? You'll say, here I am. Send me. Who will be a part? Here I am. Send me. And I feel like the Lord is really calling us to awaken to the gifts that he's given us, to the treasure that he's given us. And this is so important. We prepared something for you this morning that I'm going to give you an opportunity because there's a lot of times people say, I want to be a part, but I don't know what to do. I'm not sure where to hook up. I don't see an on-ramp. What we've done is, is we've prepared something for you that we're going to take a few moments and I... I probably should have given this out a little earlier, but I'm going to ask our ushers. I want you just to pass these things out to everyone, and I'm going to ask you not to leave them on your seat. I'm going to ask you to put your name on them, and I'm going to ask you just to make a couple of checks because the, the Holy Spirit has got a gift on some of you that's incredible, and we want to see that fulfilled. I want, to, I want to, as a pastor, know that every person in our church has hooked up with and is part of the leadership of this congregation. Some things are happening in our community that's going to be bigger than we can realize. God's sending something our way. We've got to be ready for it. We've got to be prepared. So I'm asking every one of you, please fill this out real quickly. This will take literally probably 60 seconds for you to do. We just want you to do this, and I think this is going to be a blessing not just for you, but for everybody in this church, not just those that are here, but also those that are coming. Thank you, Lord. Let me have one of those also. Let me just explain that. There's six categories that we're going to give you an opportunity to be a part of. Welcoming team, family ministry, media, facilities, prayer, hospitality, and there may be, there's even a place for something that may not be written down there that you really feel in your heart that God's called you to, a gift that God has called you to. I want you to, I want you to put that down there right now. And this is important. 
See, what you're basically saying to the Lord is, here am I, Lord, send me. What I have is not mine, it's yours. This isn't something I came into the world naked and I'm going out the same way. I came in with nothing, I'm going out the same way. Everything that I have right now is I'm just a steward over. And this will be very important for you to do this. So just make a check. Find something in there that you feel like you can be a blessing. You know, you may say, well, I don't know that I have a lot of other skills. You can help me. You can help me greet out in front. I try to get out in the foyer every, every Sunday morning and just greet. You can come and help me do that. That's something you can do. Or there's a lot of other areas. Maybe you can help with facilities. So many things that we need to do that we need skilled people that are anointed for that. And this is something I believe God's going to just use us for. So I, would, you just, would you take just a couple of moments here and, and do this? Um, be sure and put your name on it, and I will collect those in just a few moments as soon as you're ready. We have also, um, I, I want you to know that we've got other churches that are standing with us and praying for us. Um, Back a couple of months ago, Cody Hughes, I don't know if you remember him, he came and spoke on a Sunday morning. He had a fabulous word for this church. I'm just telling you something. This guy's got something. He's got a couple of churches up in Cleburne, and Cody is going to be a part of our future. He's going to be part of what God's doing at Family Worship Center. Yeah, he's, 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 he said, our church is praying for you guys because we really believe God's got you strategically located for a purpose and for a reason. And so that's a, that's a good word. Cody's going to be coming back here before too long and ministering again. But uh, I, I, just, I just want to encourage, did, it, did, everyone get, did everyone get one? All right, praise the Lord. Well, here's what I want to ask you to do is be sure and uh, actually, Christy, you can just, yeah, come up here. It'll be fine. Okay, why don't we do that? Do you have a basket at each door? Can you do that? Thank the Lord. All right. Thank the Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Come on, can you sing? God is so good. God is so good. Come on, sing that. God is so good. He's so good to me. One more time, sing that. For God is is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. For he has done great things he has done so many great things he has done great things he's so good to me praise the Lord can everybody say praise the Lord we are going to do something for the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, the Lord has equipped us and we're going to do something wonderful. And I'm telling you, I want this week, I want to touch base with every one of you. And I want to, I want to talk to you and help you 
with your stewardship and your ministry and the things and gifts that God's put in you. And I want to help you plug in because I'm looking for your eternity, not just your present. I want your eternity to be as fruitful as your present. Can everybody say amen to that? I want that. I'm going to help you. I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm equipped to do that. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Well, let's all stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we say thank you today for your blessings on our life. Thank you today for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for the privilege we have of being hooked up with you in ministry. I was asking God that you would speak to every heart and let this day be something that weighs very heavy on their heart for the purpose of engagement. Help us, Lord, as we engage in your word and in your purpose and your plan. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Would you turn to about three people, tell them, say, I really do love you.